everyone. It's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio. Today I'm sharing with you a warm-up I did this morning, um, some abstract art journal mixed media play. In this handmade journal that I made out of pieces of packaging, um, Stencil Girl sends their packages of stencils in these, these hard tag board envelopes so that they don't get bent. And I made this journal during uh, something that I watched from Dina Wakely where she was showing how she puts these together with, with uh, washi tape. And I have a video, I'll try to link it in the iCard um, up above in the corner. You can hover over that and see a little iCard. I'll link it if you want to know how to make one of these. But uh, it was her idea, it was not my idea, but you can watch it. I don't know if if her video is anywhere, so I'll just show you mine. So I started out with mark making on this page that already has a few pieces of paper and some white gesso. That was part of the making of the journal. Um, she was of the opinion, and so am I, that it's nice to start with a journal page that already has something on it. So I used a Payne's Gray Ink Tints pencil and then I also used a uh, pipette, a dropper, a plastic dropper. I have a whole bag of these that I ordered off of Amazon. And I got some of the Indigo Fluid Acrylic from Golden. It's called Golden High Flow. And I just kind of traced over those scribbly lines that I started with, which were mark making lines where you hold the pencil towards the back and try not to control it too much, but just kind of roll it over the page and let it make its own marks. So then I did a little bit of spritzing of that wet um, fluid acrylic. I want to call it acrylic ink because that's kind of what it is, but they call it fluid acrylic, so I'll, I'll let them call it that if they want to. Um, and then I also used my water brush and just kind of went around and I mean this is completely intuitive I'm not intending to make anything this is very abstract I'm just doing a warm-up I'm trying to get some color on a page some pattern on a page and just see what happens this is how abstract art works you just kind of see what happens you don't go into it with the intention of making a thing you just let it flow and I wanted to play with that indigo color. I really like that color. It's like a very deep blue. I also like Payne's Gray, but I don't have a fluid acrylic of any sort in Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is even more deep than this blue and has more um, cool tones to it. Although this is very cool. It has even, I don't know, it's, well, they call it gray for a reason, even though it's blue. It's very grayed out blue. So then once I got this um, blotted up and dried, and it took a while to dry this with the heat tool, because uh, it was very wet because I'd sprayed different water on it to get the, the acrylic uh, to run. Um, plus then I'd use the water brush on it, so it was wet. So I did uh, quite a bit of drying, which I just cut out because you don't want to watch me dry paper. That's crazy. I got out some some paper, uh, some baskets of different papers. I got out the pinks and the purples. I don't know if you can see it, but about three quarters of the way down and on the left hand side, there's a little piece of washi tape um, that's pink. It's pink polka dotted tape that this book is, part of it is assembled with, but, and it's got gesso over, but it's pink. So that, that gave me the, the idea that I wanted to use pink with the blue. And then since red and blue make purple right pinks and purples sounded good with this blue color and I so I picked out different pieces from those two baskets and uh, a couple of these pieces I think three of them have sparkly stuff on them and you'll see that come into play later um, the two kind of rectangle purple pieces it's hard to see in the video but they're they're glitter paper like they're cardstock that has glitter on it already and then that piece towards the center on the left side is also has some glitter on it it's a piece of Yupo that um, I must have made for something and it's a scrap left over uh, it has probably has alcohol ink on it and 
In fact, I know it does. I mean, the only time I ever really use Upo is with alcohol ink because it's expensive and I just, I pretty much reserve it for that. And there is, in the um, Marabou set, there's a, a iridescent glittery alcohol ink called, I think it's called Rainbow. And I think that's what's on that piece. I know you guys can't really see it, but there's also some stenciling on it. So I'm just putting down the papers with YooHoo glue stick. I'm thinking a little bit about composition, but not a whole lot. I still don't know where this is going 100%. I just want to get some stuff glued down and, you know, colors that I like, shapes that I like. Um, then I got out some gesso. I felt like it was getting kind of busy. And so I got out white gesso and I'm going to paint that on in a few places. Also, there's this one place on the right hand side where there was a piece of paper that was already glued down. And it's uh, now that I've put all these cooler tones on it, it's it's very yellow and I didn't like it. I wanted it to um, go away, it didn't go with everything else. And so I wanted to put gesso over it. Although I ended up not getting very far on that. I guess I got kind of distracted. But I wanted it. I, I don't want anything to completely go away. In, in mixed media, you're working with layers. You want you still want the layers to show unless you absolutely hate them. Then you can go over it with a whole big thick bit of, of gesso. But um, that's the piece over there I'm talking about. I put a little bit more on it. But it was just not the right color. It's yellowish. Like a neutral. Um, a neutral parchment color I don't know I just did not not like it so that's kind of what prompted the gesso thing but then it went over a little bit more than that <laughs> this is how things work <laughs> so then I thought okay I'm going to do some stenciling uh, I decided to stencil with that same indigo color uh, that a lot of the original mark making is gone of course and that's fine that's how mixed media works you put layers on I thought I'd bring a little bit back and kind of connect some of these areas together with this stencil that's meant to be like a map of streets or something I think it might even be called Puerto Rico streets maybe or something like that I don't know it's from stencil girl most of my stencils are these days um, so I added back in some of that indigo I uh, softened the lines with a moist baby wipe to blend them in because I don't like having harsh lines at the edge of where I've stenciled and I thought I would put some of this scripty looking stuff on it didn't like it it was too dark um, too overpowering so back out came the gesso <laughs> to calm that down it's not that I didn't like the pattern it's that I didn't like the fact that it was so intensely dark um, because I'd used that same indigo color. I wanted it to be softer than that. So that's how it went. I'm touching up a few places where things weren't completely glued down and getting this thing very, very dry. So then as I stood back and looked at it, I saw a lot of these rectangle shapes that kind of reminded me a little bit of buildings. And um, then there's that one kind of camel hump thing that looks kind of like hills in the background and I decided that with my finishing I would bring those shapes back out so I brought back the Payne's gray pencil and this is where the gesso came back out again <laughs> third gesso time I, I felt like that that left hand edge was now overpowering everything and so I pushed it back as well the stenciling and uh, brought out a few of the the rectangles that I could see um, with a little bit more white and then I thought I needed something on that side and I reached into the purple basket and I found this heart one of my favorite shapes is heart so I decided to just glue that on it was the right color and it was able to to balance um, all this other stuff going on the right and so it was the right size the right shape whatever I decided to just put that on there so I glued that one down. I emphasized more of these rectangular shapes and lines that I was suddenly filling after all this uh, 
curvy and circular stuff. <laughs> Suddenly it was rectangles. I don't know. This is how intuitive abstract works. You see stuff and you're like, oh, that's what I really meant. So then this is a Posca white uh, brush pen. It's new to me product. I've used it a couple times. It has that same stuff that's inside of a Posca pen, only it's got a flexible brush on the end and you you pump it at the top and then it it pushes that ink down into the tip and it becomes a little brush. It's kind of neat. You get thick and thin lines instead of the real precise lines that you get with the the other kind of, you know, kind of felty, hard felt nib thing. I've pretty much obliterated that yellowy thing now <laughs> on the, the right hand side with the addition of the, the white ink. I was happy to make it go away. So then I have these new gel pins. I saw an ad on Facebook or Instagram. You know how they do and they show you these pins and you're like, oh, I gotta have that. These ones are called Sparkle Pop. You know how I hate the pop word, but that's what they are. Sparkle Pop uh, gel pins. And I wanted to play with them. So I got them out of their package and I started to just make some doodly mark making uh, with this sparkly stuff, which also, as you remember, there's the glitter cardstock and a little bit of that glitter uh, alcohol inky stuff on that one piece. So I could bring back some of that sparkle. Um, I mean, it was still there, but added in other places. Hard to see on the video. When you see the close-ups at the end, you'll probably be able to see the sparkle pop ink. It's kind of fun to play with it. They're just little gel pins. They have very, you know, they're like a, a writing pin, but I liked the colors. They were bright. I liked the sparkliness of them. So that was fun. I hope you've enjoyed this little warm up video today. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hear from you. Leave me a comment. Um, you can ask me a question. And of course, um, any of those things, I will answer you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.